What's up everybody out there? Welcome back to another Addicted Fishing tutorial. My name is Jordan Kanigi and today we're out here talking about how to use trout magnets to catch fish on crystal clear creeks, streams, and rivers. So if you guys want to learn more about this method, stay tuned. It's coming at you right now. We have a lot of videos on our page about how to use these trout magnets. So if you guys want to learn more and you learn more on how to use these different methods in different kinds of places, be sure to check out our channel and the links below for more fun videos just like this one. But today we're fishing an ultra clear creek. It's springtime and we're going to be using a fixed float system with the micro trout magnets. This time of year, a lot of these bugs are hatching in the river and in these creeks. So using these trout magnets really emulates the natural feeding process of these fish in these creeks. And by matching the hatch of any sort of fly larva or scuds or any sort of bugs that are actually gonna be living on the rocks and in these creeks and rivers. So what we're gonna start off with first is our actual rod setup. What I have here is an Okuma Ultralight Salilo Rod. This is a two to four pound rod. It is a seven and a half foot of length. This works really well with this bobber setup because it gives you a lot of line management. And why that is important is because you want a very natural drift with this presentation. I have this seven and a half foot, two to four pound rod lined with a 30 series Okuma Kaimar reel. What I have on there for line is a 20 pound addicted enforcer braid. That's a high vis braided line. And that's very nice for this bobber fishing because you can see the line on the water and it also floats. I have a 10 pound fluorocarbon bumper with about 20 feet of it tied to the end of that line. If you guys want to learn more about how to tie these uni knots, check out the links in the description. We have all kinds of knot tying tutorials on our page Addicted Fishing, so go back, check them out, and it'll help you set this rod up just perfect. At the end of that fluorocarbon bumper, that 10 pound, I have an Addicted Trout Series fixed float. We have these different ones coming out. These are the Trout Series. We have Steelhead Series, which are a little bit bigger, and we also have a Panfish Series. So be on the lookout for those either at mustad.com or at our website, addicted.fishing. But the Trout Series works perfect in these small creeks. It's a lot smaller profile, so it's not scaring those fish, and it has the perfect amount of buoyancy for when these fish actually bite. It registers through the bobber just right, and you hook those fish every time. The way that this thing works is I have this on my 10 pound fluorocarbon. These, they come with these two rubber grommets and these come in the package. You wanna keep both of these brass weights on there. What that does for you is it creates the right amount of buoyancy for that float. You don't want this thing floating too high in the water column or too low, determining what kind of water you're fishing, whether it be fast and turbid or whether it be a nice slow stagnant pool. You wanna be able to have the correct amount of weight, so keep both those brass weights on. What I've done to the top here is added that rubber grommet freely to the line above my float. I stick my line through the two holes on the edge of that float, which allows this thing to slide up and down my line, and then I'm gonna add my rubber grommet to it. So I have that there, I'm gonna wet the top of that bobber. I'm gonna slide that over, and it's not imperative that you get all that rubber grommet on there. You can leave a little bit of that tag end sticking up, but it'll actually help your line management and help your mend. I'm gonna take that second rubber grommet that it comes with and slide it right over the base of that bobber stem, just like that, and we're set to go. Now that that thing's set up right, you can see how this sticks to your line and it slides up and down. This is gonna allow you to adjust your depth up and down given the kind of run that you're fishing. At the end of that 10 pound fluorocarbon, I've added a number six barrel swivel. And this is gonna help me keep from getting tangled up. It's also gonna add a little bit of weight because these micro trout magnets that we're gonna be using are very, very small. But again, it's, very, it's really matching the hatch of the kind of bugs that these fish are naturally eating in the water. So what I've done to the end of that, so to kind of dummy my profile down, is added another eight pound piece of fluorocarbon so that it's a little bit less visible for those fish and it adds a little bit of distance in between that swivel and that jig, that jig itself, my actual trout magnet that I'm gonna be putting on here. A one to two foot leader is proper for this. You don't want it too long because you wanna be able to fish those shallow spots. I'm actually gonna add a little bit of weight on top of that before we get started here today, but I'll get to that in just a second. So let's talk about our trout magnet choices. The beauty of these trout magnets is they come in so many different colors and sizes. We have the micros today. The minis work the best, in my opinion, in the super clear water. And again, I'm seeing a lot of these little black, these little black stone flies and these little black grubs that are in the water on top of the rock. So I know that that's what those fish are naturally eating. But the nice part of it is, is it's so easy to change out color and presentation given the situation that you have. So I'm gonna start with one of these little mini jig heads. They make multiple sizes of these, which can come, come in handy depending on, again, how fast of water that you're fishing. I'm gonna tie this on to my eight pound. Again, making sure that eight pound leader isn't too long. You wanna be able to move that bobber up and down to get you within the proper depth. You don't wanna necessarily rely on your actual leader length to get that thing fishing. So I'm gonna add a little weight after I get this on here, if I can tie my knot. Hands aren't working today. Just a typical fisherman's knot will work, just like so. So I got that tied right to the eye of that little jig head. 
I'm gonna trim my tab. And then I'm gonna go in and start picking out my colors here. And like I said, I'm already seeing some, some grubs in the river that look exactly like this little black one. So I'm gonna start with black and then I'm gonna work my way around the rainbow here. I'll go from black, I'll go to a more natural you know, brown, then I'll go to a slightly green one and then try the pink and then the chartreuse last. So let's give it a try. The way you rig these things up, you have your little jig head, you have your little fork tail here, and you wanna try to get that fork tail to where it's evenly dispersed on each side. So that way you have that little bit of action that's offered by that little piece of rubber as it floats through there. You can see how that just kind of wiggles back and forth. And again, looks exactly like a little grub that you're gonna find in the water. So this is our setup. We got our ultralight rod, we have our 20 pound test, our fluorocarbon bumper, our addicted inline fixed float, our little swivel here, and then we have our trout magnet right at the end there. What I'm gonna do here to add a little weight so I can make sure this is getting down is I'm gonna grab just a little split shot, just a little number eight split shot, and I'm gonna add it right above my swivel here. And why I'm doing that, again, is because with the fast water that's in this creek today that we're gonna be showing you guys, we're not gonna be able to get down with that little of weight. And so we're not gonna be effectively fishing in most any spot. So this, this swivel will add a little weight, but then we're gonna add that little bit of a split shot you can even use a smaller one if you want, if your river is even clearer than this one that we're fishing today. I'm gonna to pinch that down, and there we have it. This is gonna allow me to get down, it's gonna put my stuff right in the strike zone, and it's gonna let those fish see it as it floats by. So now let's step into the creek and show you a few different styles of spots you're gonna to wanna to look for these fish. So the main point we're talking about today is being stealthy in these ultra clear rivers. What I have here is this absolutely beautiful little trout run. Really the, the nice part about the trout magnet is they can be fished in any sort of type of water, whether it be six inches deep and fast or you know 10 feet deep and slow. That's the benefit of that fixed float is you can adjust your depth to that and get it right in that strike zone. So I'm gonna start shallow here. I got about three and a half feet. I'm not gonna really account for this trout magnet sinking at all. Because as soon as that touches the current, it's gonna get pulled up and up out of the strike zone. So I'm gonna adjust my split shot to the exact depth that I want. And, and along those same lines, as I come up to my run here, I'm gonna stay back so that those fish can't see me within their feeding lanes, and I'm gonna find that current line and those bubble lines, and then I'm gonna to cast to it from a distance. So let's do it here. I got my rod, I got my setup. I'm gonna start nice and then close here, and I'm gonna keep that line high and up off the water. I'm gonna be opening my bale, and I'm gonna let that float naturally the entire time. And that's the key to using this fixed float system or any bobber system when you're fishing for trout. You wanna be able to get the most natural presentation possible, and that being these little bugs just falling off of these rocks and getting pushed down the river and into those fish's face. These fish live off of their eyesight, so you definitely wanna be stealthy and you wanna watch out for certain areas where you might be spooking these fish. So I made that first cast nice and close. I'm gonna make my next cast about five feet further. Same sort of line though. I'm gonna keep my raw tip high. I'm gonna be giving it line the whole time and I'm gonna have my hand right here next to my bale ready to close it and set hook on that fish. Oh. There's a little bite there right at the end. Okay, and I'm gonna work it just a little bit further. That third cast is gonna be the farthest one. I went all the way to the far side. I'm keeping my line up and off of that water line so that that thing can naturally float. I'm not catching too many different currents with my braided line there. And that again is the beauty of that fluorocarbon to that braided line is you can see where your line is going. And then again, that, that braided line actually floats really, really well up on the surface of the river. I'm gonna bring that in. I might add just a little bit more depth and I'm gonna make another cast. There we go. And when I adjust my depth, I wanna do small increments. You can see here I have about a four and a half inch bobber. I'm never gonna move more than a bobber length. So I'm gonna go up to where the top of that top grommet is, right there. So I use about a whole bobber length that went about four and a half inches. Now I'm gonna make another cast. Again, keeping my rod tip high, keeping as much of that line up off the water as I can and letting that slide right down into the strike zone there. Okay, so first run down, no bites. What I normally would do in this situation is switch my presentation, switch colors, but I have a lot of confidence in this black one here because again, let's take a step into the water here and look. So what we're trying to emulate here today, you guys, are these little baby stone flies. They have these little camouflage protectors of these little pieces of gravel that actually stick to their body. But inside this, if you break it open, we have this little grub. And you see that little guy, it looks just like that thing that we're using. He actually has that somewhat different color. This is almost like a fly fishing presentation. We're really matching the hatch here. You can see that little guy squirming around. So I'm probably gonna go to that brown or that green one here in just a second. But that thing's got a little black head, it's got a little body, and it really emulates almost exactly like what we're using here. If you look, looks super similar. 
just a little bit bigger, something that's just gonna catch those fish's attention a little bit more. So let's get him back into his home. Sorry, little guy. Let's keep moving down river and see if we can get one. Okay, so we've come down river a little bit. We see that natural feeding lane, all the currents getting pushed over to this big boulder. So I'm gonna cast over in that little bit of a protected area for those fish and see if I can't find one underneath this rock. Keeping my line up once again, making sure that thing goes through there nice and easy. My bobber is pointed straight up and down. That's very important. If you see that thing dragging, you're gonna see your bobber pointing straight down river. It's a comment we get a lot on our page is, how do I know if I'm on bottom or not? If your bobber is ever pointed up river or straight up and down, you know you're off the bottom. But if it's pointing it down river at all, normally that means you're dragging the bottom and it's creating that resistance. So I didn't see that happen. I know I'm fishing a good depth. I'm gonna try one more cast up in here with the black one. And now that I've seen that natural food, now that I've seen that little grub or that stone fly that those fish are eating, and I see it's a little bit different color than what I'm using, I think I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna change after this very next cast here. Okay, no bite there. That can be the most effective part of using these methods like this, whether it be like a micro worm or any of these trout magnets, is how quickly you can change your presentation. All I gotta do now, pull that thing out, pull that little grub off of my hook, and I can switch right to the natural presentation that I need. I did a little research by looking into the water. Looks like this guy right here looks quite a bit more like the one we're looking for. Let's close that up and make a, make a change. Okay, there we have it. Looks quite a bit more. I'm colorblind as heck, but I can tell that's red now. So we're trying that little red bodied one. Next, we're gonna go to the brown or the green. Okay, right up under that rock here, let's go. Let's do it. Okay, so I shallowed up a little bit. I'm gonna to try to work through the back end of this tail out here. I'm keeping that rod high. Slowly letting it work through that strike zone. All right, no fishing hole number two, no bites. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna shallow up, I'm gonna work my way through this boulder garden and this fast water. A lot of times it's the fast water where these little grubs get kicked off of the rock. So don't hesitate to fish that shallow fast stuff. That's why we made our leaders so short like so. So I'm gonna shallow up, work my way down river and start covering all different kinds of water here. All right, so here I have another perfect feeding lane. And again, this fast water can really bring a lot of these bugs up and off the rocks, which is what we want. It's what the fish want. So we have this couple different currents coming here. We have that nice soft pocket behind that rock. So I'm gonna to toss that in far side and let it just swirl around in those bubbles here. Let's see if it works. Just like so, I'm gonna keep my rod tip high, not keeping any pressure against that. I want that thing to just freely float around just like it naturally would. It's getting picked up by that current. Now it's gonna pull it right down and into the strike zone there. Okay, now that I've tried a couple different casts through there, I'm gonna add a little bit more depth. I'm gonna go about six inches deeper, and I really wanna drag this thing down along the rocks. I know there's a fish in this spot. A lot of times you'll find the bigger fish of the day in these boily, ripply spots, because again, they have so much cover in there. The food's constantly coming to them. They have all that protection from that bubbly water and the rocks. That way they can just sit in there, wait for all that food to come down that feeding lane, and just munch, munch, munch without expending any energy. Bring this back in a little bit, drop it back into this fast water. And that'll do it. Okay, I'll make one more through here, then we're gonna move on down river. You can see how I'm trying to effectively break this down systematically. I'm starting at one seam, I'm going to another, and then I'm going to another. I'm not just making that exact same cast every time. That's where a lot of beginner fishermen make the mistake. They think there's only one good spot for those fish in the hole. But these fish live everywhere. They migrate up and down the river. They sit behind these rocks and some of them will sit behind this spot for an entire day or, or days at, at sometimes, just sitting in there because it's that perfect feeding lane. It allows them to expend no energy and constantly have that food coming towards them. All right. Nothing in that spot. Let's keep moving down river. 
Okay, here we have again another perfect feeding lane. We have the entire current of the river coming down into this main spot. We have a couple of different broken boulders. So I'm gonna start at the top, going that close middle far strategy, and I'm gonna work my way all the way down through here. You can see my depth, I have about a foot and a half above my split shot. I got my little guy here. So I'm gonna start in close right behind this nearest rock. And again, trying to stay back. I'm not standing in the water at any points in time here because I don't wanna to get too close to these fish. That is perfect. I got a nice, nice belly in my line. It's floating perfectly with the speed of the current. I'm just gonna let that go all the way down through there to where about as far away as those fish can't see me, basically. I worked that inside line there. I'm gonna make my cast about five or 10 feet further this time, right in that main current, right in there. Okay, I made my second cast a little bit further out there, covered a whole different section. I'm gonna go just a little bit further all the way to that far side there behind that big boulder. And using that method of going close, middle, far will ultimately catch you more fish. Maybe my first cast wasn't the perfect spot in the hole. To me, where I just cast it looked like probably the most, the most probable spot of there being a fish. But the key to that is that starting close and working your way out will ultimately catch you more fish because you're catching the fish that are closer to you. If you, if you cast right to the perfect spot in the hole every time, a lot of the times you'll scare those fish, once you hook one, you'll scare those fish that are actually closer to you, whereas you could actually catch more numbers if you were casting close, then going to the middle, and then going further. Okay, let's try one more in here, just for safe measures, and then we're gonna keep moving down river. All right, nothing in there. Let's take a few steps down and keep this going. All right, so I haven't gotten any bites thus far on these last two different colors. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch one more time. I'm gonna go to the actual, once again, I'm, all, I'm colorblind. If you guys haven't watched any of our videos and realized at this point that I'm pretty colorblind, this one, will, this one will teach you. So I'm gonna go to the green. I think that's green, who knows? Comment below whether or not that's green. Okay, camera guy says brownish green, but honestly, this one looks probably the most like that little grub that we opened up than any of them. So I'm gonna try to get that through there just right. I'm gonna slide that up. And we're ready to go. New color. So I'm gonna just continue fishing this same lane that I've been fishing. Looks like a great little feeding lane. There's a lot of structure, a lot of room for those fish to hide. I'm gonna keep that thing right in that bubble line. There's always a motto in fly fishing, especially as the foam is home. And that, what that means is that actually the path of least resistance, the main stem of the current, is what's home for the fish. And that is because that's what's carrying their food source. And so being familiar with that, familiarizing yourself with that foam, you can see those bubbles floating out across the water there. That's where we wanna to try to implement our cast the most so that we can stay in front of those fish and we're actually in their natural feeding lane. Sometimes these fish will go chasing stuff a long ways to feed, but a lot of times if you put it right there in front of them in their natural feeding lane, they can't help themselves but bite. Okay, I got a couple really good casts through there, moved down just a couple steps. Let's keep trying. All right, so I've made about a dozen casts through this hole, and I know in particular, there's a time when you should keep moving down through the river. There's also a time when you shouldn't leave a spot until you catch one. This hole, I know nobody's been here, and this is the absolute ideal trout water. We got a nice steady current, we got deep pockets, we got lots of cover. We even have a nice swirly back eddy on the far side holding a lot of bait, and I'm not gonna leave here, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna cycle through every single color I have. I've been using the greenish. I'm gonna go to the pink. Pink sometimes can save the day. Got him, got him, got him, guys. Got him, all I did was out. No, he came off! Oh! All I did there, I added a little bit more depth, I switched to the pink, and that was one of the nicest ones I've gotten all day. Darn it. Got a good hook set into him, I let that bobber go down a long time. A lot of times with such a small hook, it can be very imperative that you don't set hook really hard. 
Honestly, I'd cast it in there so many times I wasn't quite sure if that was a fish. That bobber drained, I lifted up pretty hard, thinking it was bottom, and I think I might have pulled that hook out of his mouth a little bit. So using that technique of that slow reel, slow to fast reel without a big yank, especially on some of these smaller fish, can be imperative to landing them. But we had some success, let's cast it back in there and see if we can get another one. All right, so before we leave this hole, obviously that abstract color worked pretty good. I'm gonna go to a chartreuse one really quick, make a couple more casts through there. There we go. All right, well those fish couldn't be fooled a second time. So let's head on down river, one last spot, see if we can get this done for you guys. All right, so we made our way up, nice hot and sweaty, got to another absolutely gorgeous hole. You can tell by the way it is, the way the water comes down, it all cascades. We got this perfect, beautiful little slow pocket. All these fish can sit in that foam line and sit there and feed. I went back to my pink mini magnet and what I'm doing here, you guys can see how I'm staying so far back behind the hole. Obviously, I could walk up closer, give myself a little easier cast, but what I don't want to risk is once again, getting up in front of those fish and allowing them to see me. So I'm going to stay back here. I'm going to start with my leader at about three feet, and I'm going to try to bomb one all the way up into that rapid here. So as this comes back towards me, I'm just going to slowly, slowly reel, making sure I'm picking up that slack in the line. There he, oh man, I just had one making sure I'm picking up that slack in that line so that I'm not getting a big belly below me. That way, I, when that bobber does go down, I can reel up fast and set that hook and then ultimately hook that fish. We got bit up in there. That was a really good bite. Let's keep reeling it back towards me here, nice and slow. Once again, first cast through there. We see that a lot. You know, Normally, when you're fishing these methods, you want to really be prepared on those first couple of casts. It's always bad practice to get complacent and not be ready for those fish to bite right away. Granted, the one fish that we've caught so far bit on about the 20th cast, but ultimately, I always wanna be ready on those first few presentations through there. Here we go. That's the zone right there. All right, I'm gonna bring this thing in and I'm gonna start a little bit further left this time into this other channel, this other little spillway. Let's bring in all that food down for those fish, right there. Okay, made about a half dozen casts through there. I'm gonna go about another foot deeper here. I'm gonna add a little bit more than I normally do, more than just my bobber length. I'm gonna cast up in there, and I'm actually gonna drag this thing along the bottom, making sure it's down in the strike zone. All right, everybody, though that's all the time we have for today. We had some really good bites, hooked some awesome fish, and I hope that you guys learned a little bit on how to fish these trout magnets under this fixed float system. It's very nice with this heavier bobber and being able to cast around in this super clear water and actually fish those really tactical spots like we have today. So I hope you guys learned a lot. If you did, be sure to click this link to this next video up here, some more awesome educational content for you guys. Go down here, subscribe, turn your bells on, give us a thumbs up if you like this video, and be sure to comment below with any questions you have. You could be the comment of the day, just like this guy right here. You guys stay fishy and we'll see you out there.